Hello and welcome to another episode of the F*** Face Podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey and with me as always, Andrew Panton and Gavin Free. Hello. Uh, a- a- hello, Gavin. Hello. Eric, y- you said something that, that might help. I have a mystery, a-, a small, tiny mystery. It's not a big mystery. It's a just mystery? a little baby mystery. Okay. And I think you might have just given me a clue to, he- to help answer it. You, you, When you were reading through what we talked about last recording, which uh, was... Two weeks ago, I guess three three weeks ago, because I went out of town. Was it two weeks ago? I think it was two. It was two. Yeah, it was two. Two, yeah, uh, it was two. two weeks ago, uh, you said poop brain. What is that? Oh, I think I remember. I think that's when uh, you were talking about how people who shit more get oh, less yeah, dumb, have a higher intelligence. So you were like, "Oh, I got, you're Einstein because you shit so much." That would be correct. Yes. <laughs> oh. But the, all the alcohol fucked you, so it brought you. Yeah, you've evened out. You've cancelled out um, copious booze with copious shitting, and you, you've sort of landed right in the middle. Well, I don't know that that helps. Uh, I was looking over at my notes, and I have a note that I... I the old note you don't recognize. I wrote down yeah. sometime between that recording and when I got back from Michigan, I wrote down poop game. Oh. And I don't know what that means. And th- I was hoping that would help, but that doesn't. I don't think that had anything to do with that. Poop no. game. The, was that the sequel to Reindeer Games? <laughs> <laughs> or, like, maybe I was trying to step up my poop game, but I got a pretty strong poop game as it is. Yeah, I can't imagine it getting better. Were you trying to incorporate shitting into some classic games? <sighs> like Twister? Wait. Like, this is just like a new color? Oh, <laughs> fuck. You just have to shit right there? I think you're taking, like, performance-enhancing drugs if there's, like, a poop game. <laughs> Shits and lattice. <laughs> oh, maybe it was something about... Maybe somebody recently pooped in nice a famous Nick. game. God, I don't know. Well, anyway, if anybody has any ideas for, or, or sounds like Gavin already has a bunch, but if, uh, if if anybody has any additional poop game ideas, send them my way. I have no fucking clue what I was getting at there. Do you think you could have written it on the toilet in your shit shades? Uh, yeah, probably. Ooh. Which, by the way, just so we're clear, I want you guys to know, I do wear those almost every time I shit still. Like, mm. I'm keeping I, I, that it That was the real. assumption. Yeah. I don't think either of us thought anything else than it's, that. it wasn't a fad no i didn't want you guys to think that it was like i'm some sort of a fly by night cool shitter i'm not i'm in it for the long haul <laughs> can you do me a favor and never lend me those yeah of course man thanks oh what a move that is what if i what if i have, already have it's like a way bigger rate of getting pink eye from those or do you think it's like the same i think it's the same hmm. <laughs> or do you think he's immune to pink eye I've never because had it. Of, he's constantly wow nose flaps and pink eye resistance. <laughs> You're quite the superhero. Oh no, I've had pink eye. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely, I definitely had pink eye once when I was like 15 or 16. I remember it hurt like a motherfucker. It itched. Yeah, it sucked. Huh. Well, maybe you're immune since then. Like you, you're so much. I would say you have more shit near your eyes than most people <laughs> with your shit shades. Oh. So I think no, I think the building... shades protect me from the. I, I think they 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 act as like poop particle blockers. Yeah, I mean they're definitely okay. getting it from the front. Maybe. They're blocking all that. Yeah, but I th- I feel like most of the shit particles, <laughs> if you're a normal anatomy, would be coming from behind you. Though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I hadn't considered that. <laughs> it might uh, actually be funneling it all into your eyes. This is a weird episode already. I feel weird. We are recording late. We don't ever really record this kind of late when we do the a standard recording on a Thursday. We, we're starting about oh. 18 minutes late. Uh, not for any reason, but because we were recording. I mean, for a reason. We were recording a test episode of something else earlier, and then we had to go run through some business. But uh, I wondered if if starting 7 or 8 or 9 or 15 minutes or whatever uh, off would, would affect me in some way. And I think it has. You think it has? Well, we also had to wait for Andrew, who I I ran through some, like, stuff that we had to talk about for like business and then yeah. andrew was like i need 10 minutes and then disappeared and kept unmuting so fast i didn't know he was <laughs> unmuting i feel like he's been in the lab what no, okay well here's the thing okay i'm juicing a watermelon right now so if i'm a little <laughs> if I seem a little off that's why uh we've been we've been talking a lot about the lab recently yeah and i've brought the lab to the podcast so I'm, I'm preparing. As you may remember, we talked about different fruit combinations yeah. that are not common, that, that we've, never, we've never seen compared. So I went to the store, and I bought all the fruit 
that we have, Ooh. and I got a little little hand juicer, mm. and uh, I didn't want it to go bad ahead of time, so I thought, oh, I'll just I'll just juice this fruit, put the lab on the show while we're recording. Already run into a massive issue with the watermelon, <laughs> um, juices everywhere. I'm glad that I put a plate down. <laughs> Uh, but I'm gonna have to clean that. I, I don't. Hang on. We got. Wait, are you just using a lime juicer? Like, oh like uh, yeah, <laughs> for for watermelon. Yeah. yeah. Well, because that's and it's the best juicing tool I have. Imagine the size of a lime, and then imagine something slightly smaller than that. That is what he's juicing with. Well, the point is to separate the pulp from the juice, but watermelon is mostly just. Like slightly firmer juice, where a so lime this is, is not. this is what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna juice everything. I have little plastic shot glasses. Okay, all on my uh, desk. I'm gonna juice them half and half. Then I'm gonna mix them. Then I'm gonna tr try it. We'll see if the 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 combination is good. So or we're not. currently in the lab with you right now. We are in the lab wow. as we speak, and I even have other lab work to share. This is amazing. But this is uh, <laughs> this is the current lab situation. I need to unclog the thing of watermelon, uh, and then I'm going to move on to, uh, what's the next thing? What did I combine? Grapes. Oh, that'll be an easy one. Uh, so you, that sounds delicious. Are you cutting chunks from the watermelon first, or are you just... I'm slicing chunks in and then transferring it to, I guess, the, the lime juicer, or whatever Eric said, then I'm squishing it into a shot glass. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue on with this process. Are you a big shots um, guy, typically? No, not at all. I uh, I just uh, went to the dollar store once again <laughs> and uh, secured some plastic. I feel like easy to find shot cups plastic. make sense for what you're doing here, though. That's I think that's the appropriate I, yeah. vessel. That might be the only appropriate thing that I've I've grabbed. For and this. also, can I just say uh, tons of respect and admiration? I, I think it's awesome what you're doing. I'm amazed that you've brought us into the lab to watch you work. I think that's incredibly cool. I need to apologize. I had promised to present you guys with some grape uh, lemon uh, specific flavors uh, from my lab work this episode, and I just haven't been able to get to make my way to the lab because I was out of town and stuff. So you're kind of a lifesaver no, okay. for, for me, Andrew. I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I was worried I was stepping on no, your toes. No, not at all. I, my toes are so fucking stupid right now. Just stomp on them. <laughs> I like that we're basically <laughs> taking it in shifts to, to go into the lab. <laughs> well, while I do this, do you want to see the other lab work? I yeah. Because I had homework. You gave me an assignment. Oh. You said that my sleep spaghetti... Sorry, I'm trying to get rid of this watermelon. <laughs> but you said that my sleep spaghetti... It was al dente. He said it was too. It wasn't cooked. It wasn't cooked in al dente. <laughs> is that al dente? Is that al dente? Yeah. Come, on, come on, al dente is better. <laughs> Give me al dente. This is more fun. Al dente. Can we can we lobby right here and now to change it officially to al dente from here on out? Orangutan and al dente. <laughs> that sounds way more religious than al dente. <laughs> and rubbish over trash. We can't remember. True. We can't say trash. Oh yeah, I'll never remember that one. But anyway. Al dente, you gave notes. You wanted it to be bent. You wanted it adjusted. You thought it needed more curve. It needed it to, to, to cook more, mm. boil more, you may say. <laughs> so I, in my great wisdom, mm. bought a, a staple gun. Mm -mm. And my idea was that I would cut them into pieces, like you suggested, and then staple gun them together. Staples, though. I'd... Yeah, well. Are they kept together in the socks? Yeah, so I would I would layer the socks over each other and then shoot a staple through. Was my idea. <laughs> mm. That was my thought. Sleep staples told, uh, sound yeah, less inviting to me. <laughs> I'm I'm less inclined to dive into the spaghetti now and uh, catch my earlobe on a staple. Catch an edge. No, it's all locked in. Okay. Um, okay. I was advised after I bought this that this probably wouldn't work, and that that was correct. <laughs> That was a correct assumption. <laughs> Staples do not stick into foam noodles is a, just a fun fact for people at home. Um, I tried a variety of ways. I jammed the gun. I accidentally shot a staple across the room. It was very chaotic, but did not work, unfortunately. However, I did get it to work. I'm not going to reveal lab secrets of how we got this done. But may I <laughs> present to you an updated, more noodle-filled, more cooked Sleep spaghetti. Look at how comfortable that looks. Oh, look at that right yeah. there. He's done it. He's That's done it looking there. good. You got bends. You got twists. Nick says they look like cigarette butts. <laughs> they do. They definitely <laughs> Not do. Not necessarily wrong. 
uh, they're, they're bendy. There's also uh, a product I'd like to introduce called the Sleep Macaroni, where it's just a singular strand. Pretty good for sleeping. Will you get a bruised neck from it? Yes. Sleepy man. But <laughs> until that point, it is very comfy. You know, I... I think I see what you've done, uh, just kind of looking at it, and it's it. I, I it seems to have worked really well. One of the I saw one of the comment leavers uh, made a suggestion that I thought was pretty brilliant. And they said you should just take one of the long p- p- uh, pool noodles and then just cut along it almost uh, in a spiral as you go up, almost like a telephone cord, and that oh. that might allow some maximum flexibility while maintaining the the structure and yeah, maintaining it as one solid piece. But uh, clearly, you've you've uh, come uh, to a different solution that seems to work just as well. So, uh. oh, it works great. I will say it's better than just bending an uncut one. Definite problems with that. I have uh, slapped my lamp because <laughs> you, you bend it and then you lay on it, and then I have a tendency to move in my sleep. I woke myself up last night trying to use it because it slapped the wall. I was like holding it down, and it hit the wall, and it spooked me. Um, I guess the main question is, is this any more comfy? And the answer to that is absolutely not. It's terrible. Oh. Do not do not use this. So it is not a great product. Overall. Well, let's not let's, 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 let's not throw shade at sleep spaghetti. Uh it clearly doesn't work. I don't know that it's sleep spaghetti's fault. I think it might be the pool noodle's fault. I don't look at a pool noodle and think I want to cuddle up with that in a bed. I look at a pillow and think that. And so I would think that the consistency would be somewhere. Less than pool noodle, but more than pillow, maybe. So, like, long, long pillows. I love the idea of it being four because you slapped your lamp. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was terrified that it, it, it I mean, if you're, if you're sharing a bed with someone, it is a dangerous thing. <laughs> oh, oh, that cracked me up. That's so funny. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Y- you're telling Andrew to replace the, uh, well, yeah, change everything I, about it, basically. The, well, the no, filling. I think... I think you could take the filling oh, out oh. and just stuff it with like batting or something and achieve uh, a much comfier result. But it, but mm. I also don't want to listen. This is Andrew's process, and I don't want to get in the way of Andrew's process. Everybody creates differently. Uh, the road to the final product is is forked uh, many times over, and everybody takes a different fork at different points. So uh, the imp- the important thing is that we get there at the end, and I think we will. Uh, so I've just been I've been reticent to 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 throw too much uh, suggestion towards Andrew because I don't want to get in the way of his creative process. What was that convention that had the bull pit? Uh, Dashcon. Dashcon. Yeah. Because I'm thinking next RTX we could potentially have a big spaghetti pit, a big sleep spaghetti pit. You think we to... do a sleep spaghetti pit? I think so. Didn't that uh? Didn't that adult actress uh jump in that a uh, ball pit recently and yes, break her back? Yes, that was at TwitchCon. Yes. TwitchCon, yeah. Wait, what happened? Uh, uh, she what's Adriana Chechnik, I think. They they always talk about her on the YMH podcast. She jumped into a foam pit and broke literally broke her back. Oh God, I think yeah. I think I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had to have surgery and stuff, like emergency surgery and stuff. Yep. Terrible, awful. Just yep. terrible. Um, if we're shifting gears out of the lab, unless we're still in the lab for the juice, I don't know where the juice lands. I'm I'm, ju- I'm juicing grapes as we speak, so feel free to to take us out. Um, uh, I just I'll have a shot ready. I wanted to, I wanted to bring up that the Panton collection comes out. Oh no! On uh eight twenty five, uh, which is <laughs> just a couple of weeks away. It'll be uh, Friday the twenty fifth at ten at ten a.m. And the Panton Collection is something that we've waited on for a long time. Yes. Uh, and I just sort of want to give... <laughs> no! <laughs> so I have stopped going to merch meetings because it felt awkward them saying the Panton Collection. I didn't really know what it is. It's, that's uh, horrendous. Well, Andrew, why that's, did, Andrew, why that's was not this, it. We have it, your face no! on a balaclava that you can buy. No! Yeah. Um, no! We also have... Uh, that looks so bad. It's, it's also a sunshade for your car, but yeah. it's also koozie down there. but it's also a koozie. Oh. <laughs> no, um, oh no! I it's basically want... anything that needs to have like a wraparound design. I... <laughs> How do you... it is? You have, and I will say that is you true. S- you have stopped coming to these meetings, uh, and that's fine. 
That's you cannot come to the meetings. It's okay. But then this happens. Oh, I like going yeah. to them. Um, on the one side of the sunshade is Andrew's <laughs> giant face. <laughs> oh, no. And on the other side, um, of this of this sunshade, I'm a really big fan of. If I can get this thing to paste, uh, there we go. It says so this that way it's uh, facing the inside of your car. It says regulation. <laughs> oh, oh, that's awesome. That's a, great. Um, I will say that we have gone through a few iterations of Andrew face balaclavas and uh, what is, uh, Guvicon, who helped us with the uh, Sloppy Joe's bingo site, actually received one of these because these were all test samples of Andrew's. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmare. It looks like the end result of a rip-off Mission Impossible yeah. movie. <laughs> um, there are different, so you can see that there's different ways of Andrew's face being interpreted here, where there's like a mouth hole, there's no mouth hole, oh my there's bunch of they're double layered, whatever. But oh, Goofy no. has a one and only, he has one of these that's signed by Jeff uh, that I asked him not to share, but he can share it now because it is. Fucking insane oh. looking. You know what that picture oh. looks like to me? It looks like Anthony Hopkins laid his clothes out <laughs> for the day, and he's trying to figure out what he wants to wear in Silence of the Lambs. It's like when the Mrs. Doubtfire mask lands in the street <laughs> and gets <laughs> run over. Um, it's so bad. I love the fact that, especially in the in the first one you posted, Eric, yeah. I can't help but notice that the seam... The yeah. join it's the, is yeah. on the front. It's, yeah, it's right in the yeah. chin and between the, the chin, why, yeah. why is it on the back? <laughs> oh. It's so horrendous. Yeah. I I love it. The neck looks awful. It's so, so <laughs> it's so fucked. But we will have these on sale on the 25th, which is just a couple of weeks away. Uh, store.roosterteeth.com is where you can grab them or a sunshade for your car where it looks like that's how you make a skin for Andrew's face for The Sims 2. And, uh, and oh. you may be saying to yourself, why would we Don't make a this. balaclava of Andrew's face? And I'll tell you right now, because Gavin gets cold in the winter oh. and he <laughs> wants to wear a balaclava around outside, but he doesn't want to look like a criminal. So now he just looks like another dude. <laughs> he wanted a nice. That's where this all started is Gavin wanted a nice balaclava that people wouldn't be like intimidated by him wearing. Yeah. So we skinned Andrew's face and we put it on. <laughs> I also had the idea that potentially if we ever do in-person stuff, Andrew should only appear in his own balaclava mask. Oh. I well, the nice thing about it is if you wear it, nobody will think you kick children. So that's a, just a plus. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no accusations just think you of ate that. Them. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> so uh, behind the scenes talk, these have been in uh, the, the e-com office since April, maybe, March or April. Yeah, They've yeah, been there for a while. Yeah, it, we need to uh, get it done. Tony and that crew have been wearing them around the building <laughs> for uh, <laughs> off and on for months, scaring the shit out of people. It is, it's become a thing over there. It's, it's the worst it's thing we've ever made, and therefore my it's, favorite. Yeah. Awful. It's pretty great. I'm really excited. I think I think having a koozie with your face while wearing your face, like I'll be like drinking a soda with your face on the koozie, <laughs> sitting in my car wearing your face on my face while my sunshade with your face is up, and it's it's pretty exciting. Uh, one of my collection gonna be good stuff. One of my favorite conversations I've had in in the history of working for the company. Uh, was the conversation about whether it should have a mouth hole or not. And just like how seriously we took it, trying on the mask, which is creepy, which is creepier, which is just creepy enough. Like it, there were a lot, the audience doesn't know this, but a whole lot of conversation and work and debate went into whether that thing has a mouth hole or not. It's so bad. It's so bad. I will be at the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got some notes. I, I think that, um, you know, the, the f face RTX break show had all the, uh, the grown tubes. The next one's going to look like the weirdest cult in the world. Oh. It's going to be a meeting uh, of freaks. Can't it's, wait. It's just really like, man, I, I can't wait for people to have this. And the image, like the pictures that we're going to get from people is going to be so exciting. <laughs> so like, exciting. Oh, why, why in... Why in summer are we getting this? So that way you have it for winter and you're used to wearing it all yeah. day, every day, and you can stay warm. It's perfect. And if, you, if you're in a group that has an evil plan, you don't have to wear mascot outfits now. You can just all wear these. 
Oh, Perfect. man. <laughs> It's, it's it's like the beginning of Point Break. Gavin, uh, <laughs> congratulations, man. You're going to be so toasty warm this winter. I'm going to be so warm. Uh, that's great. Thank you for giving that update, Eric. I can't believe we've managed to go this long without Andrew uh, oh, yeah. no. accidentally seeing good. that. It's pretty cool. Oh, uh, what's wrong? Fuck. How's your juice? I got grape all down my leg. <laughs> it slid down the handle. <laughs> oh, Were you man. wearing the shocks? Oh, I'm not. I should have. You know, you got to get safety shocks on. <laughs> I got to get my safety shocks on. I don't know how it happened. It poured down the handle. I put too many grapes in, I guess, and it overflowed and it went down oh, the, the handle, juicer handle down my leg. Yeah, oh. it went down the juicer handle, poured down my leg like a fucking spout. Oh my oh, god. god. Okay, well I'm gonna have a shower after this. This is I'm sticky already. I'm covered in fucking grape juice. Hey, I uh, we're, we're getting there. So did you end up putting the grape with the lemon or what? Not yet. I'm I'm juicing my second set of juice. I got the grape watermelon mixed. I'm getting the grape and the lemon. Together. Are you going to juice everything first? Do you want me to or do you want me to just take the shot? Of I think the, you should get everything grape. ready and then we'll yeah. go down the line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. I'm in the process of doing that. I was thinking the other day about about the time where I got hit in the face with a, a piece of tree while I was lying out in the sun and I thought it was Jeff. I was thinking of other times... Have you ever ha have you ever been injured but you don't know what did it just like that moment? Yeah, uh, constantly like when waking up. Oh, you like you get hurt in the night. I I've been followed by a gentle ghost for a few years now, who's <laughs> constantly <laughs> invisibly pushing me into shit. I was once in the in the woods with a bunch of friends, and there was this area where like a bunch of trees next to each other had been cut down, and all the stumps were the same height. So I was just lying on on my back on all these stumps, and some girl who who uh, I saw, I had a little bit of a crush on at the time. She just walked over to me and was looking down at me while, <laughs> while we're having a conversation. And at one point, I shut my eyes. And then I got such a impact in my kidneys. I think she kicked me really hard in the kidneys. <laughs> but it was so painful. I just rolled off the stump and my eyes were shut. And when I looked back around, she was like with other people. And I couldn't figure out what happened. And I'm pretty sure... Someone just, it might have been her, just booted me right in the side really hard. And I almost blacked out. But I still don't know what happened. And I, was, I didn't want to go over to everyone and, and be like, hey, did someone kick me really hard? <laughs> <laughs> so I just like sucked up the pain and I was just quiet for a bit. But I just really don't know what happened. I would love to, if I could see my life from alternate angles, that would be one of the moments. I just, I don't know what happened. Have you ever had that? Not in that way. <laughs> I think it's hilarious the idea of like there's so many unsolved mysteries <laughs> and if you had the ability to go back in time and witness what really occurred yours is what happened to you on the stump yeah you think you that's avoided a waste? all the great yo an absolute waste she definitely kicked you in the kidney <laughs> you're just gonna get confirmation of what you already know that was also one there was a different one where I was walking home with uh, one of my friends and sometimes we'd have a little scrap we'd like try and uh, like trip each other up and, sh and shit. And we're having a scrap, and I, I accidentally, like, grabbed him and tripped him, but he banged his face on the floor when we fell over. I was like, oh, you're, you're right. Because it was, like, friendly fighting. And mm -hmm. he was like, oh, shit. And uh, I was, like, picking up my backpack, which had fallen off, and he was, like, you know, in a little bit of pain. He was probably, like, 10 feet away, further up. And then all of a sudden, I had a tremendous pain in the side of my knee, and it, like, dropped me. Like, it... You know when you hit like the side of your knee and your leg just collapses? Yeah. I I just went down and I couldn't figure out what happened. I don't know if he threw something or but he just kept going and I was just on the floor rolling around for about a minute just like, "Oh, and I could barely stand up." And I would also need to know what happened to me there. Like, did he throw a stone at my knee? I never <laughs> asked him. Is it at all possible that you are the reason why Jeff has a gentle ghost in his life? That the gentle ghost has been fucking with you for a long oh, time. Oh, and I shook then him. Then when you went to America, you shook him off, and it picked up on Jeff. You son of a bitch. You little, you little prick. Did you get gentle ghost no! before we met? No, oh, wow. never. <laughs> because I haven't been hurt since the tree thing. Oh, like uh, I've been hurt, but not by you know unknowns. You, huh. you motherfucker! You tr you, mm, that's not cool. I'm sorry. I, I that's also, okay. I appreciate it. It's like it. uh, it's like it follows. Now I got to figure out how to give the <laughs> <laughs> give the curse to Nick or something. Sorry, I Nick, think you have to get hit by something coming like a piece of tree, and then it transfers to the person you think through it.
Oh. Oh, there you go. I really like the idea of it follows, but not knowing how to pass it on to the next person. <laughs> so you, you just, just like, have to figure it out. Trying You're like, trying shit. You have sex with him, it doesn't work. You're like, oh, God. <laughs> well, that was a waste of time. It tries. <laughs> it tries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, I got a couple of little, like, house cleaning things, if you guys don't mind. I'd um, love to hear that. One, uh, recently it's come, uh, it, it, we've talked about it, I, I got my Gems Award achievement after all those years. Congratulations. Uh, thanks. And then I decided to just go ahead and get the rest of the achievements, and like the day I was wrapping it up, they released new achievements, which is fucking annoying. <laughs> so I have, I have one more to go again. I have, yeah, it gets worse. It gets worse. I have one more to go. It's called Fuck You, Jeff. No, I have one. <laughs> Round two. I, it's not related to me in any way, but it's, I have one more to get that's going to take me a couple months. Uh, but then, uh, you know, I don't, I, I got DM'd by somebody at the Gems of War company and they were like congratulating me on getting the achievement. And they were like, hey, we're, we're glad you finally got it. I think they were like, probably like, took you fucking long enough, you know, but they were polite about it. <laughs> and, uh, and they go, you know, we've been kicking around ideas in the office and I think, uh, I think we might have another achievement coming headed your way. And I was like, God damn it. So I guess <laughs> there may, they, there, I don't know, there may be a fuck you, Jeff coming. Do you think it'll be like a lifetime one? It'll be like ten times the amount. Of I don't work? know. I don't know that I have it in me, honestly. Like I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't. I, I don't think I'm on my back nine yet, but I'm pretty close. You know, like at some point you gotta, you gotta look at how much life you have left and determine where you want to spend it. <laughs> um, the funniest part is your opinion on this doesn't matter, but what will happen is in, you'll enrage an entire community of gyms of war players. Yeah. And like you have no say in the matter, but people are going to be so pissed when another insane achievement gets added. And if it had my name on it, I don't know that it'd be any way I could physically not get it, you know? Yeah. It just feels like a, it feels like a requirement. Sure. Um, another thing is, you know those Allen and Ginter baseball cards that we open up sometimes that they have, like... That's where the egg was. Remember the egg that I got you, Gav? It was this baseball card of an yeah. egg? Yes. Uh, and they have, like, sandwiches and stuff. Well, the new cards are coming out in a couple weeks, and they haven't released the full card list, so I don't know, but they have released, like, what the different inserts and stuff are. And they have one called Talon Ted, and it says, it's a bird-based insert focusing on formidable claws. <laughs> so I think there's a really good chance there might be a Falcon card about to hit the market. Ooh. So we should keep our eyes open for that. And uh, one other little thing. Uh, yeah, we can open on the break show if I can get them. Uh, do you remember the Hamburglar? <laughs> we had that conversation about the Hamburglar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Course. And that guy. Grady Dick. Yeah. Grady Dick. I got a Grady Dick baseball card or basketball <laughs> card. I have to share with you guys. It's so funny. Oh, uh, I see just, it. I really want you guys to see it. Let me. Uh... Anyway, the break shows on 4 p.m. on Mondays on Rooster Teeth and our YouTube channel. And then you can watch the VOD, the recorded show later while Jeff is looking for this thing. <laughs> yeah, I figured that you... might be a good place to plug it you can since you were talking about cards. Cut all this out. Nick. All right, here we go. Great. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> here you go. Look at this fucking card. If, uh, if for the audience, uh, he's, he's wearing it. <laughs> it's, it's pretty his... dick. He looks like the little kid from Soul Plane. Yeah. A lot of people are saying, I know you guys don't watch the show, but a lot of people are saying he looks like BJ on Righteous Gemstones. Um, it looks like what he would look absolutely. like if, if the burglary went well. <laughs> anyway you can check it out on the instagram it's his uh it's 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 like a tops now baseball or card they released but it's his outfit on draft night and he's wearing black sunglasses actually andrew you nailed it with the with soul man i think it's exactly what it looks like and uh, he's wearing yeah. this red <laughs> suit that looks like it's made out of sparkle <laughs> yeah there you go there's bj he looks like ruby rod i don't know who that is who is ruby rod well from this chris tucker of fifth element it's just like something he'll wear Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. That's absolutely. a great card. Thanks. Are you going to get that card graded? Or are you going to try to get a 10 gem mint of that? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'll see if I can get it graded. This ad is brought to you by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Fall is right around the corner, and HelloFresh is here to help you plan for the busy season ahead with tasty dishes delivered straight to your door. Simply choose your recipes and pick your delivery date, then lay back and enjoy the last days of summer knowing dinner is covered. Banish the end of summer blues with HelloFresh. No need to stress about how you'll handle it all this fall because HelloFresh takes care of the meal planning and delivers pre-portioned ingredients right to your home. 
So whipping up a homemade meal is a cinch. The key to dinnertime success? Variety. HelloFresh keeps your taste buds on their toes with 40 chef-crafted recipes to select from every week. From family-friendly to fit and wholesome, you'll always find new and exciting recipes to try and love. I absolutely love HelloFresh. It's always such delicious food. It's so much fun to open the box and get all the ingredients. You get the recipe, which is really easy to follow. Regardless of your skill level as a chef or just your experience in cooking, I'd recommend it to anyone. It's always so good. You end up with a bunch of recipes you'll love. I, I just I can't recommend it enough. I love it. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Face and use code 50Face for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50Face and use code 50Face for 50% off plus free shipping. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Plus, every purchase supports the Shady Rays Impact Program, which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life. From childhood cancer patients to young adults with serious health conditions, Shady Rays is making a lasting impact on their lives through sunglasses. If you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code FACE for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. There are a lot of times in life where you are faced with a decision that might not have an easy or clear answer, and it's really tough to navigate those moments. I mean, for me, they pop up quite a bit, especially when I was growing up. Um, I have found sometimes you just have to go with something and understand that maybe it won't go the way you hoped and view that as a learning experience, but... It's always great to consult with someone as well who has a level of expertise that you may not have or even just some insp insight or perspective you don't. Sometimes in life we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Therapy is a, a wonderful experience to go through in my, in my experience, um, a little redundant, but um, to say that. However, it, it's just super impactful. It has made so many positive impacts on my life, and it's just such a healthy process to go through, in my opinion, so I'd highly recommend anyone try it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com face today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash face. I have a, uh, a CPAP update. Oh. Oh, you're, you're, you're farting nonstop, right? That oh, yeah. The... Filling me with air. It still does that. So I'm sort of trying to use it and trying a different shit. I tried uh, having the CPAP up my nose and taping my mouth shut. Still fill me with air. Then I just tried the mouth tape alone. I tried it um, the night before last, taping my mouth shut. And then um, coincidentally, at the same time, food poisoning. Oh, no. Now, the mouth tape has a little sort of, I think, an emergency breathing hole. What the fuck? It was, it was, it was a pressure hose. It, I, I threw up in the night, and it came out no. jetting through that slit. And then, oh, which caused some so sort gross. of backflow through my sinuses, shot out my nose, and it was just all bile. And it was, it made my whole head oh. spicy and tingly. It was probably oh. the worst experience. And then after that, I just shat myself for about 24 hours, just shitting liquid again. Awful. 
Probably the worst combination of things to happen at the same time. So... The, the, the second time I tried taping my mouth shut, I threw up through it. Let's, 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 <laughs> oh my god, let's that's go, so gross. Let's go through this step by step. So you went to bed normal, you felt fine. Yeah. And you put that thing on your mouth. Yep. And then in the middle of the night, you woke up nauseous? I woke up throwing up. <laughs> so you woke up in the act oh, of throwing up? no. I woke up with, with my... <laughs> it, it honestly felt like I woke up with someone's fist in my mouth. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Did you throw up all over your bed and all your sheets and stuff? Yep, and a bit of the wall. Oh it, it my just god. shot out. It, it like blew through that, blew out of my nose, and then blew out, and then like kind of blew the tape off because it was forceful. It's like, uh, <laughs> so like in The Exorcist kind of. Yeah, I, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. <laughs> and to get the feeling out of my face, <laughs> to get it to oh. like stop being all like stomach oh. acidy. Yeah. It took like over a day. Yeah, once once that gets up in your nostrils and shit, it's like it's there for a while. Yeah. It's like burns. Are you done with taping your mouth or is that Yeah, forever. Are you going <laughs> to Yeah, you can't You can't that's not viable anymore. Oh my god, I'm so sorry that happened to you. That's terrible. Uh, yeah. What are the odds? What are the Do you odds? feel different as a human? Like, has this experience changed you? I would be disturbed by this. Do you, do you think this was your Vietnam? <laughs> Well, it means that basically any time I throw up after this, it's never going to be that worse. Well, that's a great point. Well, you'd hope. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like... I don't know why. I don't know if I'd take fate like that. Yeah, not to get too gross, but I'm imagining like m you're snorkeling and you puked in a <laughs> snorkel. That'd be pretty bad. Yeah. Outside of that... <laughs> From the surface of the water, just a load of <laughs> food come flying out. Like a, a whale blowhole, but it's yeah. vomit. <laughs> and then, uh, then a shark would probably eat you because yeah. they get those chums. Oh, so how many times? So what? I tell. Let's talk about the shitting. <laughs> what was that <laughs> like? How was that? It was bad. I I was holding my ass closed again because it was just in that you know it's in that water phase yeah. where if you're not actively closing your ass, something could leak out. Something that feels like a fart or even just a bubble could be oh, liquid. I, I sat through all of Always Open yesterday. Uh, just with my hands pressing my bum cheeks closed. Oh. How how does it compare to when you were dating uh, Meg that time and you shit on the plane seven times? Uh, it was maybe eighty percent of the way towards that, but that was oh. that was even more uncontrollable. That was that was, that was the point where any time I lost consciousness, my underwear would be soaking wet. Oh, oh my <laughs> with god! Just, so with just bum water. So <laughs> I need to drink stuff later. Okay, oh, sorry. Can we calm One down? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One last question, and then I'm off yeah. of it. Uh, what uh, what do you think gave you food poisoning? Do you have any idea? I mean, I could name the establishment. <laughs> yeah, please do. So he has an idea. A, a lovely place, a little underground place called. Um, oh. I had the, I had to get this. I had the poo poo platter, and it was not good. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of on you. That's, That's on your me. fault. Yeah. And uh, well, yeah, as I will say that the food was good. It, the experience afterwards was not good. And maybe, uh, even more annoyingly, the person I was with, absolutely fine, and we shared it. So, <laughs> sod knows what one single piece of bad meat I ate. But that that is always the icing on the cake. Is that the place that's like behind a place and underground and then there's like, it's like all pirate themed kind of? Yeah. And if you spend like $99 on a shared drink, you get a light show and explosions and stuff. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We didn't do that. that but we saw <laughs> another table get it. I went there with, uh, with Emily and some friends. And let me tell you, that's a place that uh, <laughs> for a guy who, uh, that, not the coolest place to hang out if you don't drink anymore. It's like, oh, it's, bet. it's kind of all uh, f like. F like f uh, centered around celebrating drinking together in f like colorful ways. Yeah, and mm. like sharing, like one drink, yeah. four straws sort of situation. There was yeah. one drink that had, I think it was made of thirteen different rums. <laughs> yeah, uh, didn't go for that. Wow. But yeah, it was it was a nice place, uh, good atmosphere, lovely staff, delicious food, terrible aftermath. Do you think you'll go back? Oh, not for a bit. I'll give it a year, maybe. <laughs> Was that your first time there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I thought I had a bad sleep, but the sleep's still getting. I will say, uh, a point I forgot to bring up, I did fall asleep at the bottom of the pile, 
and then I had an itchy face, and it was alarming trying to get to my face. It was not a good experience. <laughs> like, I just went for a quick scratch, and then I had to go through an obstacle course of noodle. It was not fun. <laughs> another, <laughs> another negative about the sleep spaghetti experience. I have a question for you, Jeff. Okay. That I've, I've run this by Gavin as we're, we're talking about uh, butt stuff. I, I had a thought. Okay. When do you think, how long did it take from the point in which fire was discovered, like created, the first fire was made, to the point that we realized farts were flammable? How long was that? Do you think that was an immediate realization? Do you think that took some time? What is the context of the first flammable fart? Here's a question. Do you think... So... Do you think it predates humans or, I guess, uh, or Cro-Magnon or whatever, uh, wherever we were evolutionary at the time, do you think it predates when uh, human entities cr learned how to create fire? Because, you know, like lightning would strike and a tree would catch on fire and there would be fire. Like, do you think anybody ever, like, saw a tree on fire from a lightning strike and then ran up and farted on it? Mm. Or do you think like we mm. had to learn? Do you think humans had to learn how to how to create and then control fire before they then learned to start doing things like farting on it? Yeah, that's a. I think probably they would have had to have created it first. Would be my assumption. Yeah, I think so too. I think so. Too. I would assume that the the first fire fart was accidental on the day the first bonfire was made. You think it's the first? I think it would have taken a while. I don't think it would be immediate. Uh, well, now, hold on a second. H how many times a day do you fart? Yeah, 13 to 21 times a day, the average humans fart. So if you figure you've got your first fire and there's probably everybody, like everybody in the cave is excited about it, right? Like it's like the yeah. talk of the town. So you <laughs> probably got like eight, 18 or 20 Neanderthals all crowding around and they don't have social graces at all. And they probably, they're pretty dumb, right? Uh, uh, evolutionary brain, brain size. So they're, they're into stupid sophomoric potty humor. I bet farts happen so frequently that it could have it could have happened on day one. Do you think they they made a fire inside their cave and everyone died of carbon monoxide? <laughs> yes, I also think <laughs> that must that, have happened somewhere. Yes, or like Definitely. one person crawled out and was like and, and put two and two together and realized to to make the fire closer to the the mouth of the cave. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's how you learn, like right? trial and error. A plausible scenario for when it would have happened is somebody trying to put out the fire in a funny way. <laughs> like I could see somebody yeah. thinking that like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to go do this and everyone will laugh. And then they would get a surprise when they realize all that oh, blowing shit. out a birthday candle. Yeah, exactly. But with your ass and then the <laughs> fire came back and, and nipped them. But then I wondered if that did happen, there would have to be a question of is Steve's farts flammable and only Steve's or is everybody <laughs> do we all got flammable farts? Can we weaponize this in some way? Potentially, if we're shooting out fire, like what? What are the different angles? I wonder I, that were approached upon discovery. I was thinking of, of it from a different angle. Like, let's say you're the first person who figures out that you can fart into a fire and 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 you know make a stream, make a little blowtorch. Does that change the balance of power in the cave? Like, are you oh. now elevated as like like if you were just like an average Joe? Are you now like the chief? Like it's like the lion having the <laughs> biggest mane. Yeah, exactly, exactly like that. You've now demonstrated your like your dominance in some way over over fire, over the elements. Like, do you suddenly get elevated to like chieftain? I think it depends on your reaction to the stream touching you. I think that goes one of two ways. You either are at the top of the pyramid after that, or the absolute bottom. You get ranked down if you if you like scream or whatever. Mm. If it really bites you, do you think anybody? Like back in those days, if anybody had like a particularly bad fart and like really gassed a place out, <laughs> do you think people ever got killed for that? Like for being a witch? Yeah, like like your farts were so bad it like it bummed or scared the rest of the 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 cave crew. So. <laughs> I think honestly, you, you would have been killed yeah. for some of yours. <laughs> You're trying to argue it's just the acoustics of the cave yeah. and where you sleep. <laughs> Well, did you tell them, Andrew, what you were try what you were gonna do? Well, that was okay. So the follow up <laughs> is if the idea, my thought was okay. 
you can shoot fire out of your ass. Maybe we can weaponize this. I wondered if someone were to fart a bunch of times into like a jar and then tied a sealed it up and then put like a cloth around the top <laughs> with a sealed lid, lit the, the thing on fire. Could you make a Molotov cocktail out of gas just by fart? <laughs> but I was saying the whole point of the rag is that it like you it gets some of the liquid on it. So it's easy to light. I don't know what what's the rag going to be doing. The, it's the source of the fire. So you light the rag, you've got fire, you throw it, the jar breaks, the gas releases, and okay. a little fireball comes out. I don't think there's enough gas in a fart to have that amount of pressure. But what about several? What if it was like a day's worth? Well, the trouble is every time you go for a new fart in there, you're releasing, there's no way you're going to get a good seal. Or yeah. like a, you need a valve or something on your anus. It would have to be pretty specialized equipment. I feel like it would have to be attached to your anus and there would have to be, it'd have to be fed in, there'd have to be a nozzle fed into your anus with like a sh on off sh valve that you can, yeah. you know what I mean? That you can turn on just so there's no possibility of escape. I, I, I was bet thinking you it would have it. like one of those beaker corks with the straws going through it <laughs> with like a non return valve at the end. That's the only way you're keeping stuff in. Yeah. But if, Okay, let's just say that that is all a thing that happens, that, like, we do find a way to do this and you can store them. Like, all the mechanisms of getting it are, are figured out. Do you think it would work? Like, if you, you could do that. Does the science even work for that is what I wonder. Yes. Like, if you could solve the other stuff, I wonder if the science itself works. What a fireball erupt well, did, does upon it like, break. Because it's, it's like methane fr from your ass, right? But then do you need oxygen? Like, does it only work in a oxygen rich environment too like do you also need to be pumping other gases in there with it i don't know I, I yeah i don't know i don't have the answer to that i'm just curious no i think it's it i think as soon as you throw it with the fire and then the it explodes the the oxygen rushes in and that's your oxygen rich environment and then i mm. bet you could make a i mean i don't think you're gonna like i don't know I, I wouldn't try to overthrow a small government with it <laughs> or anything, but i think uh i think you could probably have some sort of a some sort of a reaction. That I, how about this? Do you think anybody has ever lit a Molotov cocktail out of their ass just by like not filled it with gas, but just like had a regular Molotov cocktail and then used their <laughs> ass as like a flamethrower to to light it? <laughs> what a way to start a revolution! If you really want to make an entrance, yeah, I, I don't think it's been done before. It's something I at least something have to not think seen about. It. You could be, dude. You'd be you could be the next Che Guevara. People be wearing your t-shirts for the next 150 years if you if you figure out how to light pot if you light uh, start a, light a revolution with only your asshole. <laughs> light a revolution is such a great name for the true story behind this person. So are you gonna are you gonna attempt this? I don't know if I have the equipment to do it, but I'm very curious about it. If so, I'm sure somebody out there is smart smarter than us and. No science in a way that could break this Eric down. has doubts. He says he can't even juice this fruit. No, the fruit's juiced. <laughs> it is all good to go. Okay. I will say I did realize that I forgot to buy bananas. So I'm going to, next time, we'll do the banana one. But I got the two of the three. I'm just staring <laughs> them down. I'm kind of scared to drink it. I think we'll wait until near the end of the show because I don't know what the reaction will be. Okay. What you guys? Uh, what did you guys do while I was out of town? I had a realization. So I've been writing stuff down because you know like i didn't know the caps lock key and all that stuff mm. so whenever i have a question I've, I've started writing it down or like a realization just to have i realized and this might be something that's very obvious to everyone else that we go through five seasons every year i had never thought about that hmm. it's a five season year we go through five seasons a year every year has five seasons that you go through because okay. you, well, you go through winter twice? You, yeah, you have two different winters every year. Huh. I never thought about that. So this is the problem, and I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. We are recording the Summer of 98 content tomorrow, and we talked about if we enjoyed that, then doing something similar as like the winter of 98. And so I thought, okay, if we do what is the definitive movie of the winter of 98, I realized you have two choices. You either... <laughs> have to use December from 98 and then January and February, which are the furthest months apart and feel ridiculous, or December of 98 
and then the January and February 99, which equally feels as ridiculous, if not more. I think you got to go with the former over the latter. I know it doesn't make, I know it doesn't really make sense, but I, I think if it's got to be within the bounds of the year. So you got to go January, February, December. I agree. It just seems ridiculous. It's an elegant. It yeah, it's not, it's not ideal. Yeah, it's not the it, it, time not being linear in that way is very off putting. But is that why you never really hear about like the winter of forty five? Like, is it going to be? <laughs> well, it could be either end. I'm going to Google winter of forty five. That's probably lots of war. Of I picked a bad yeah, year. Probably see what. <laughs> yeah, not a good winter. <laughs> the Dutch famine of nineteen forty four and nineteen forty five, popularly known Ugh. in the Netherlands as the Hunger Winter, was one of the major uh, European World War Two famines. Ugh. Yeah, it's not fun. But that was my realization. I have I have this problem with like the NBA. I feel like because mm. it spans uh, to like it goes over, like it just doesn't make sense. Baseball's all in one year. Baseball's the only sport that gets it yeah, right in one. that regard. Because yeah. hockey and football do the same shit. Yeah. Even college football now. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, the M like, you know, the 2012 season. It's like the 2012 yeah. season or the 2013 season or the 2011 season. It's that. I don't like that. But they yeah, use it like the year it starts is that season. Yeah, they call it like in NBA. They say like the 2020. Like right now we're in the 2023 2024 season. Right. Isn't that a cool way to put it? Like yeah. sports games always have the year ahead of the year you're in. It'll just say yes. that. It'll, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's mm. exactly why. Like we'll get Madden 24 this year. See, it doesn't make any sense. I don't like it. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It's very confusing. No. Oh, can I tell you guys something cool I saw recently? Please. So when I was in Michigan uh, for the last, uh, for that little vacation, um, I was in the like Detroit, Dearborn, Gross Point uh, area. And they have, uh, apparently Ford is a big deal in Michigan. I, I guess uh, they uh, revolutionized the world or something. And so the, everything is Ford. Uh, there's like a Ford museum. There's a Ford house. There's this place called Greenfield Village, which uh, Henry Ford had built like in the 1920s. It's the prototype. Uh, or it was the inspiration for Disneyland. It's like this period. I, I assume like very similar to what you went to when you went to Colonial Williamsburg on a vacation for some reason, Gavin. Yeah. Uh, like everybody dresses in like period appropriate garb and stuff, but they've built like an entire town and you can like, it takes more than a day to go through it. And they have like a train that goes through it and you can like, get taxis that are model t's that drive you around and they uh they did the craziest thing though is that in this greenfield village because henry ford had more money than god he just bought everything cool he bought the wright brothers bicycle shop like the actual building where they in learned where they invented the plane and he just moved it and then set it down in greenfield village and then he bought their house and he did the same thing he bought thomas edison's laboratory from new jersey and had it brought over and rebuilt right there and you can go in and tour it and go through all their stuff wow um so they have just all this crazy americana ephemina and in the museum like the main museum they have some they go fucking hard i saw the chair lincoln was assassinated in <laughs> dark <laughs> it's still yeah it still has like like dark spots on it it's oh. just fucking sitting there, oh. dude, in a museum in Michigan. I never would have thought that that'd be something that would be in a museum, but I, I guess it makes sense. But uh, you don't think like Detroit and then like all, all this famous gruesome stuff. I saw the car Kennedy was assassinated in. I, 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 I was right there. <laughs> it's the most they just have, place in the world. They have all the really... shit where people died, and it's right there. Crazy thing about that Kennedy car, you know, the one where he got popped? Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> you would yeah. think that they would retire that car. They didn't. They cleaned it up and kept using it. They used it for two more presidents. No, what? It's evidence. Yeah. They built a special roof on it, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and then they continued using it until like 1977 oh, no. or something. So who was the guy when, when Lincoln got done in the theater or whatever? Yeah. Did, who was the, like, how quickly between the bullet entering his head was someone like, oh, I could sell this chair for a lot. Like, <laughs> what was the time period between those two events? <laughs> Somebody's trying to unscrew the chair. Yeah, it's like, oh, can anyone, <laughs> can I buy this chair? Dude, I have no idea, but something else that's even fucking weirder about that chair is that dude died in the theater, right? Yeah. Like, yes. watching a play. And, uh, and in the theater, what do we do? We're, we're fucking quiet, and we, we mind our P's and Q's, and we don't make noise. It's a rocking chair. Why would you have a rocking oh. chair at a theater? Dude. I mean, it's, if you're the president... 
I feel like I would want a rocking chair. If I could demand a rocking chair anywhere, I'm always demanding a rocking chair. Had WD-40 been invented by that point? No, I don't think. Well, I don't know. I don't think so. But who knows? <laughs> Was it just one rocking chair and the rest were fixed? Or were they all rockers? <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe he maybe he only rolled in rocking chairs. Maybe that was like it was like in his rider. They just knew ahead of time. It was green M and M's and rocking chairs for President yeah. Lincoln. What a weird historical item to look at. Yeah, that, I mean they had other non depressing stuff. Did they have too. the car that Tupac was shot in as well? Like what other assassination memorabilia <laughs> was there? I didn't see any other assassination memorabilia that I can remember. That was the stuff that just really stood out. They had other presidential cars where presidents didn't die in them. They had a lot of airplanes and old cars and shit. They built a uh, a Holiday Inn motel in the middle of it as an exhibit. So you can like go in like a 1950s first run holiday in motel and see like what it looked like is kind of cool. They had a exhibit. I just fucking weird collection of stuff. They had an exhibit that was an entire like two rooms. That's just every single Hallmark Christmas ornament ever made. Oh, wow. It's like, I was telling Eric, there's like, it's like Snoopy Town, dude. There's like 10,000 Snoopy Towns. Yeah, there'd be a lot of Snoopy. He would have been in fucking heaven. His, he would have been jacking off left and right. Um, <laughs> Fuck. Anyway. <laughs> right next Snoopy? to Lincoln's death. I don't ask. I don't know. Oh, don't, don't come on the chair. You're in Snoopy Town. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Get away from the car as well. There's no it's safe place <laughs> to come in here. Get off that Wright Brothers bicycle. Get out of Snoopy Town. Why is Town. there so many historical objects in this oh. museum? Not on the Hindenburg. <laughs> anyway uh that's a cool place but i was just blown away that you could just go to a museum and just see all the things that people sat in when they got assassinated would you be pissed if someone monetized your assassination no you'd no <laughs> no I, I think i'd be indifferent at that stage yeah i mean but i feel like the money should go to the family at least well maybe it does maybe maybe they they'll, maybe they'll work out they work out like a, like a cut or something yeah i don't know you know if i if I would have seen Lincoln's death chair without context, I would assume that was just a retired Santa chair. It has real Santa chair vibes. Yeah, it really does. It. it really does. It looks like North Pole style. Was, it, was any of the, the ceiling from above Hitler there? <laughs> I, I didn't look. It was mostly American shit, you know, so I don't oh, okay. know. You might, have to, you might have to go to the <laughs> BMW or the Mercedes Museum in Germany to see that. <laughs> Could you imagine pulling that as like a trading card, as like a set, like one of 99 Lincoln's death chair? <laughs> the exhaust from the JFK car. I don't, you're saying, Gavin, do you want your, your assassination to be monetized? I would be more upset about the fact that JFK was like the beta tester for what they need to do to prevent it. They threw a hood on or whatever Jeff said, or a roof, like they changed it. Like they took notes from what happened and then made adjustments. That I'm pretty sucks. sure they'd already figured that out back then. He was just in a convertible for some reason. Well, nobody, they hadn't, there weren't a lot of assassinations back then, so they, it hadn't, they hadn't had been a need. Yeah, I don't think that that was a problem they felt they had to solve, and then they're like, well, we clearly can't have that happen again. Well, when yeah, was Franz up. Ferdinand? Uh, that was way before, yeah, that was World War I. Um, Winter of 48, I There's believe. the car. You can see they put that special, <laughs> like, roof over it. Yeah, no, I would have, if I was a ghost and I was JFK, I'd be like, couldn't have done that before? Had to do yeah. that after? Didn't I think that he before. I, I think it existed, but they. I honestly think it existed, but they took it off because it was a nice day. I want to say. I want to oh. say they said that that there was like a little thing that said that like like they had the roof and it could have been on, but it was just like a really nice day, and they were like, nah, let's take the top off," and then you know, they took the top off. Yeah. Yeah. Then he ended up in a museum. He ended up in a museum. Um. We're getting close to the end of the show here, and I want to make sure that we have time for Andrew to drink. Okay. Explain his <laughs> what he's done and how he's done it and what he's doing and what he drinks, because I need to know what these flavor combinations are. Okay, so I'm going to post a photo of what it currently looks like, this monstrosity. <laughs> uh, real mess of a juice situation we got going on. Um, what flavors are it's It's uh, watermelon and grape. And then lemon and grape. I don't have banana. I will do banana in the other one uh, next time. They look pretty good. I feel like watermelon grape is going to be delicious. I think grape <laughs> lemon is going to be I like a real just problem. Put all the <laughs> smushed grapes just tucked behind them. Well, 
Yeah, I, I realized that with the watermelon, if I didn't clean the chamber, the juice would just shoot out the handle. Um, so we had to take them out. I will be eating this fruit later because it is delicious. I'm about to, I'm going to go for the, the grape watermelon right now. Grape watermelon. I've never heard of that combination before in my life. And that's the one on the left. No, the, the uh, one on the, the right. the right one. Yeah, the red one. Trying it. That was, that was not good. <laughs> That was what? supposed to be the good one. <laughs> Wait, what's what? the ratio? What's the bad? ratio? How much grape to watermelon? It was equal parts grape to watermelon, mm. green grape to watermelon. I went equal parts on all things. What do you think's ruining it? it? That is way more sour than I thought it would be. I don't know why it's so sour. Sour grapes? Sour <laughs> grapes. <laughs> it is an expression. I think, I think the grape probably overpowers the watermelon. You probably want to go to like a 30-70 mix. Yeah, I think there needs to be some modifying. I think like 20 grape, 80 watermelon is probably... Mm. Well, I think you need to just have straight up watermelon and straight up grape to see if you hate one of them. Oh. Okay, well, I'm going to do this again, so I'll have all the drinks ready next time. Yeah. I won't, yeah, I won't yeah, bring yeah. the lab to the show. Um, okay, so now I'm going to try... <laughs> I'm going to try the lemon and grape. The color on the lemon <laughs> one is so lemony, man. Mm. I don't know. You can it's, tell that it's starting to separate. That there's clearly like a bottom layer that's going to be all lemon. Also, I it. I wonder if there's a difference between green grapes and red grapes. I assume there would be. Oh, def I definitely 100%. for flavor. Yeah. yeah, I just yeah. I felt green was better than red as far as what this uh, test mm. would be. It's not, it's not, but yeah, that's fine. Why is it not? Why is red equally good for for juicing? It just I don't think a green grape is going to give you what you want, which is sweet. It's going to give you a little bit more of a kind of tart. You know, I would argue with you, but that was very sour what I just consumed. So you, you may be you may be dead on right there. So maybe the grape adjustment as well. Are you guys uh, familiar with cotton candy grapes? Yeah. No. They're yeah, they're Nick is. Yeah. Those are the best tasting grapes on earth. So good. Um are they like injected or are they just bred to taste like that? They're just bred to taste like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't think oh, they taste God. like cotton candy at all. They don't. They I just don't. taste good as fuck. Yeah, they just taste like good <laughs> they taste like very, very sweet grapes. I don't know the cotton candy thing is hilarious. Yeah. So okay. I don't know, Andrew, what do you think of these new flavors you've invented? Uh, so far, first one, not great. I'm about to take down the second one. Here we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was actually... That sounded like an Andrew Dice Clay impression. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, it's so sour. <laughs> you just drank straight it's, lemon juice. It's so, <laughs> it's so sour. <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> That was actually better than the first one. It just is really sour. I bet what that one would be sold by a smoothie company as like an immunity Ugh. boost of some sort. Oh, yeah, my face like is tingling. Oh, what, what would you do differently <laughs> with that one? Um, I too much. Lemon? I didn't really. I didn't really taste a lot of grape. I would yeah. say so. Probably once a more grape. A little less lemon, but that was, was that actually half and half again. That was half and half again. Ooh, that's a lot of um, lemon. Yeah, no, I felt it. It actually, but that the sour was very overpowering, but the actual taste itself was not bad. Hmm. I hmm. I think the problem is is it's not bad because it's essentially just tastes like lemonade. So there's not like an angle to invent an actual drink out of that. It's just everything I'm thinking of that would make it taste a little bit better is just turning it into lemonade. Well, maybe we could learn what you didn't like about the first one if you just had lemon and watermelon. Oh, Yeah, but watermelon lemonade exists. It does. That's true. Hmm. Yeah. That's, we're trying, that's we're trying to break new ground. Yeah. Good point. Okay, well, I think this was a successful lab. We've learned some things. I, I've taken some notes. I've adjusted some levels. Um, yeah, thanks for bringing us into the lab. Absolutely. Of course. It was my pleasure to do so. Uh, I will be back uh, next episode with uh, a few more drinks. Yeah, that sounds great. I guess we uh, we should probably wrap this up then. I will, I, Andrew, I will endeavor to to be back as well. I was also going to do some experiments. I can't wait so. to see your lab work. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how it differs. We'll, we can compare and contrast, and uh, hopefully we'll have that uh, next week. I'll have uh, Ice Cream Gloves V2 ready pretty soon, too. <laughs> God, that's very exciting. That's very exciting. Uh, all right, I guess, I guess we should wrap it up then. Um, well, there you go. You, uh, you made it all the way through. I, I, assuming that you're listening to this right now. If you're not listening, you didn't make it through. There's no point in talking to you. you uh, you're not one of the real ones. Uh, everybody else, though, we really appreciate it. And uh, here's a little tip. Uh, I just got into this new band called Clowncore. 
Uh, I recommend everybody else get into it too. It's uh, they play in a porta potty, and uh, I'm going to go see them play live next month, and they are going to play on stage in the porta potty. Do they let the crowd get in there one by one? Oh, I don't know. Oh. I don't know. I can't wait to find out. <laughs> Ta ta. Bye. <laughs> that was that was such a villain laugh by Nick. Oh, that was alarming. <laughs> I don't know. Ta ta got me. Hey guys, Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Eric is famous. Everyone forgot about it. Pan has a lot of things to say. Gavin can carry two men. Jeff made a smoothie. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face.